Now, uh, why there's been this shift uh, away from technological intensivity towards uh, just extensive growth, um, I think is is very hard to, is much harder to speculate on. Um, I think it's worth for us to reflect on a little bit. My, my sort of uh, basic candidate is that uh, there is something about science and technology that is quite scary to people, and there are, there is sort of this widespread, not very well articulated sense that science and technology may just be this giant trap that humanity has created for itself. And, and uh, this is, um, and there are parts of this that are, you know, that are very legitimate concerns. There's you know, the environmental set of issues where uh, there is a worry that runaway technology will possibly destroy the planet. Uh, there obviously are all the, uh, the military type things where I think the, uh, the creation of nuclear weapons was this incredibly important event, maybe took many decades for it to really filter into the consciousness. But uh, it is, it at least sort of put this counterpoint where science and technology would not simply positive in the way people had thought in the 19th and uh, first half of the 20th century. And so if you go back, I, I was rereading this uh, uh, New York Times op-ed um, in 1945, the day after Hiroshima. Um, it was sort of, this was evidence of how the government could, um, could organize scientists to work harder and faster and get things done. And, um, and people who didn't believe in large government funding of science needed to, uh, needed to um, think twice, that, uh, and then sort of ended with, quote, and the result, an invention, with nuclear bomb. Invention is given to the world in three short years uh, that it would have taken perhaps half a century for prima donna scientists if they had been left to their own, unquote. Now, uh, whatever you may say of the merits of that or not, that's not the way people talk about this stuff anymore.